So we have Christmas trees for Christmas. We are going to make a Halloween tree for Halloween. So inspired by Ray Bradbury's Halloween tree, um, that is what we're going to do today. <laughs> so a little disclaimer with this one. Um, now creativity has not shown up for quite a while. I think it knew I was busy and was not gonna pay it attention. Um, it basically came in and did zoomies. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I'll let you drive and I'll just put on the camera. And I mean, it shouldn't be too hard, right? Yeah, right. So this video instead, I'm going to do commentary um, for all the different stages of making the Halloween tree. And I will also run through all the mistakes I made along the way. So let's begin. So I did have a few parameters for this tree. Um, I did want to make sure that it could be packed down at the end of the season so I could use it again next year. So this does need to be something that can be pulled apart and then put together as well. Step one, making the framework. So there are probably two ways of doing this. <laughs> the way I did this was I had seen a, heaven forbid, a glitter LED Christmas branch tree at Kmart. I went, that's a good place to start. I mean, it gives me a good framework and it's got the pretty lights on and it's got a base. Um, so I knew I was going to get, need to get some PVC piping. So I did buy that and I bought connectors. I also bought these Christmas, like gold Christmas branches, which I thought I was gonna use to kind of fill it out a whole lot better. Um, in hindsight, I probably could have just used those Christmas branches and used a PVC frame with connectors just to create the tree that way. That probably would have been the most simplest um, instead of trying to connect basically two things together um, because the thread on the Christmas tree into the stand um, is different from the PVC piping and the connectors that you buy at the hardware store. Uh, so this was just like never going to work perfectly to begin with. Probably could have just built the framework without the glitter because here is the disclaimer about glitter. If you see it, put it down. There was this moment. I think I'm gonna start by taking some nail polish remover and I'm gonna get as much of the glitter off the base as I Just can. Just leave the glitter alone. Don't try taking it off. The nail polish really didn't do much. My next thing, as I was sanding part of my frame down to make sure everything was fitting properly, I thought I would also take it to the glitter. Seriously, you will not be able to get rid of it. And if you're going to do anything with the glitter, add more glue on top to make sure that thing is sealed in as best as you can. Okay, PVC piping or tree. Look, both are perfectly fine ideas. Um, as I said, in hindsight, I would have preferred um, to just have built it from the PVC piping. I probably could have made it a whole lot easier. Step number two, when it comes time to gluing, because I ended up using liquid nails to glue the connectors to the PVC pipe, my fault, just glue the pieces and put it aside and come back in three days time. That's all I can say on that point. Clearly I don't listen to myself. Once these are all dry, then we can work on the next step, which is, look, PVC piping, if you're wanting to put texture on it, you're gonna need something to adhere it to. So what I ended up doing, this is the part that did work, I took liquid nails and I attached um, brown paper to the PVC pipe. And this created um, just something more textured that my paper mache was going to um, be able to stick to afterwards. This you do want to do. Now I did move on and I did create a little bit of a baseline of texture using um, a paper mache mix and this brown paper and it does create a little bit of a rough base of a texture. You're starting to get those lines going up and down. That does work. Um, I would make sure that your frame can stand 100% by itself and all the pieces are connected before you start doing this. Otherwise you might find um, that you know, you're gonna have to tear paper off to make sure that the pieces reconnect perfectly. It was at about this point that my creativity went 
this was fun. I'll see you guys later next time when I've got another great idea. It was just me and my logic sitting on my shoulder going, okay. This was where we decided to just put it aside and let it dry overnight and see what we came up with. Next step was putting these branches together. So again, if I was using PVC connectors, I would have just slotted in these branches um, and moved from there. Instead, I decided I was gonna pull apart these branches and attach them to the LED tree. It's okay so long as you actually remember to turn on your tree lights and actually see where the lights are before you start gluing branches. With these branches, I ended up um, splitting a lot of them in half and then I just took hot glue gun and attached them. What I will say is um, try to attach them where there seems to be several branches coming out. It seems to slot in a whole lot better and it's easier to blend. Um, it looks much more natural. This was one point that did work. Hot glue gun, branches, attached. They did take several hours of me just doing bit by bit. That is okay. We got there in the end. Once that is done, there's a few things you can do. First, I would take the hot glue gun and just smooth down um, probably some of the, the cuts of where you've added the branches. They might look a bit bulky. Um, just that way it kind of looks a bit more streamlined. It's just gonna make it a whole lot easier when you start adding on texture, which comes next. So for this, I made um, a much smoother paper mache paste. Um, for this one, I use wallpaper paste and some white glue and add water. So for adding texture, I tested two different ways. One was using tissue paper, which I know works really quite well. Um, ideally, I would have used brown tissue paper because that way I don't have to worry quite so much about painting afterwards um, because that adds the color straight on. Um, I was wanting just to use what I had around the house, so I had white tissue paper, so that's what I've ended up using. Now, that you add just like a little bit of the paper mache. Um, it's easier to add it directly onto the, the brown paper and then lay the texture, the tissue to paper that are on strips um, on and kind of bunch it up to create the lines that you want. I did take the tissue paper and dip it into the paper mache paste and then use my fingers to um, basically get all the excess paste off. And honestly, the tissue paper is just too fine and it just tears way too easy. So I would definitely just put that paste directly onto the tree and then use that paste to uh, just crumple. Now the tissue paper works perfectly fine, um, but I did want to try toilet paper as well um, just to see what kind of texture difference it was going to make. I found it created a rougher sort of um, wood finish that I was looking for that I kind of imagine a Halloween tree would have. So I actually found that a whole lot easier to work with Again, put the paste straight onto the tree, lay down some of the toilet paper and just kind of crumple it into the, the texture that you are wanting. Now, because I had like a whole range of like textures from the brown paper, I've got plastic branches, I've got glitter branches, um, that kind of just helped sort of streamline that texture all the way up. I have not used it on all of the branches, Hopefully this will blend it all, and once you get that paint on, you shouldn't see the difference too, too much once you get to those plastic branches. Again, this is the point where you just want to let this set aside, let it dry, give it a good 24 hours. Okay, now that that is all done, we are moving on to the final stages, which is the detail. So the first step is the painting. You're going to want to get a solid brown coat onto this. So there's two ways of doing this. You can use spray paint um, or you can use acrylic paint. My only tip will be though, um, because you've got those plastic branches, you are going to want to use a plastic primer, otherwise that plastic will just peel off at some point. So there is spray specifically for that. Um, of course, it's going to depend on what you end up using. Uh, if you've got mache over all the branches, then you are perfectly set. 
Once you get that spray or acrylic on, um, again, let it dry. And then you're going to want to take a dry brush and some different shades of brown just to streak some of that um, brown across it. Because what it's going to do is you're going to want some darker browns for the, some of the creases to really create um, a bit more of a gnarly texture. But then you're also going to want to take some lighter browns to brush on to just like the very top of the texture, almost to create like highlights on your branches. Now I left the final details of the pumpkins to last only because of the spray paint. I didn't want that to get onto my pumpkins. Now these are decorations I had from, um, I think it was Michael's I had picked it up when I was in Canada quite a few years ago. Um, but I'm going to pull this apart. I'm going to grab just a little dab of glue just to keep that in place. And that should hold it pretty well. All right, have you joined for the final? Yeah? So there we go, we finally have finished the Halloween tree. All I need to do now is plug in the tree, turn it on, and there we go. We have our own Halloween tree. Thank you, creativity. <laughs> it was interesting. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Hope you took lots of learnings of what not to do. Um, as well as the few points of how you might actually want to make your own and I'll see you in the next video.